The last episode was about Glenda's sufferings. This episode deals about the court's final judgment on Jeff. This episode begins with showing Lionel sitting in front of the FBI officers. This is the continuation of the first episode, where after arresting Jeff, Lionel was called by the FBI officers. Thus Lionel is seen crying, thinking about his son Jeff. After that, Lionel goes and asks the officers, Sir, if you don't mind, can I see my son? The officers agree. After some time, some policeman brings Jeff to the place where Lionel was sitting. Lionel stands up. When he saw Jeff coming, Lionel becomes sad as he sees Jeff's hands and legs were chained. But without showing his sadness, Lionel hugs Jeff and says, It's alright my son. Jeff asks about grandmother. Lionel says, Grandmother is fine. Why did you do this all son? Jeff says, I don't know. I wanted to do it. I did it. Maybe because you taught me how to dissect cat and pigs. I would have been so curious to dissect humans. Surprised Lionel says sadly. What did you say? Am I the reason behind your deeds? I did all those for just fun. I never insisted that you go and dissect humans. I never have even thought or meant that. Don't say to me that I'm the reason why you did all these. I've never taught to you something like that. But Lionel starts crying as he felt that. Somehow he was a reason to. Why Jeff started killing humans. Jeff says, I'm not claiming that you are the prime reason why I ended up like this. Observing too much what you did, made me more curious. It made me do it more and more, and even to an extent where I needed humans eventually. Meanwhile, Joyce comes to her aid center. There were a lot of TV channels standing in front of the center. When the reporters saw Joyce, they rushed towards her. They asked her a lot of questions. Ma'am, do you have anything to say about your son? How was his behavior when he was small? Did you go to jail to see him? She only says to move and went ahead without caring them at all. She enters the center. She had an HIV patient sitting in her room. Joyce checks his reports and says to him, your report says you are HIV negative. When he cries out of happiness, Joyce also cries with him, holding his hands. He asks, why are you crying ma'am? Joyce replies, nothing. But she was crying thinking about Jeff. Lionel coming back from the police station is the next scene. At night, Lionel sits in the dark in his room. Sherry approaches him and turns on the light saying, why haven't you slept yet? Come, let's got to bed. Lionel replies I can't sleep, you go and get some sleep. Sherry says, Lionel, you have to look after your health. Don't stay awake, tensed. I'll give you some pills, and then you should go and have a peaceful sleep. Lionel couldn't even sleep, thinking about what all Jeff did. When Sherry said that she'll bring him sleeping pills, Lionel becomes angry and says, you really want me to have medicines. It will only bring you new diseases. Joyce too was like this. That's why Jeff ended up in this way. If Joyce haven't eaten up all those random pills when she was pregnant, Jeff would haven't been this weird. Also, she should have not let Jeff all alone after our divorce. She should have stayed with him at least for three months. Joyce is responsible for all this. Cherry asks, where were you all that three months? Lionel becomes upset when he heard that and goes to sit on the sofa. Lionel sadly says, you are right. I should have stayed with him. If I was there, all this wouldn't have happened. Everything is my fault. Sherry consoles and says, I'm not blaming you for anything just reminded that you could have also stayed with him. I didn't mean anything else. It's not at all your fault. Lionel sadly says, no, you were right. I should have cared him. Also, I taught him everything he does today. I'm solely responsible for all this. The next day morning, Lionel goes to his mother's. That's Jeff's grandmother's home. The house was surrounded by a lot of news reporters and police. Seeing that, Lionel goes to the backside of the house and enters the house through the door backside. There were a lot of policemen inside the house too. They were searching the things in the underground basement. Grandmother was standing between them. She has weak memory. So she forgot what all happened there. She, still thinking that Jeff is living with her, calls out Jeff and says, there are a lot of people here to see you Jeff. Where are you? Seeing Lionel, the police says to him and the grandmother, Sir, you can't come like this anymore. It's all sealed here. Lionel takes grandmother and says to the police, she has a very weak memory, I'm taking her to the upstairs right now. As grandmother had no idea about what's going on, she plays cards in her room, and Lionel joins to play. A Milwaukee City gathering is shown in the next scene. Jackson is giving a speech on Jeff's murders. Thousands of people have gathered there as Jackson's audience. Most of them were the victim's families and relatives. There were the police chief and many other important people on the stage. Jackson says in his speech, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff the monster killed 17 people. This shows the complete disregard of the police. If there was no racism, Jeff would have been already arrested, and many of them would have been still alive. As a complained person was black woman, 
they chose to ignore it and never took any action. We are here today, fighting against Jeff's deeds and the racism against the blacks. We will fight for sure. The chief officer going to Milwaukee City Police Station is the next scene. Two policemen got suspended there, the same policeman who came to investigate about the 14-year-old boy's issue when Glenda complained. That day, as they chose to believe Jeff instead of Glenda, the boy died. If they had believed Glenda and investigated further, the boy could have been saved and a series of murders could also be prevented. They got suspended because of that. One of the suspended police says, Sir, we didn't feel anything wrong about Jeff from the way he behaved. He also had enough evidence to prove that the boy was his boyfriend. How could we even imagine that he is a serial killer? The chief replies, You should have investigated about Jeff more that day itself. Instead you chose to not believe what a black woman said. This suspension is for that. The policeman become angry and leaves then. The next day, Lionel and Sherry is watching TV in their home. They are watching interviews of people who were discussing about Jeff. Some were saying lies, some were blaming Jeff's parents, and some blamed his way of living. Lionel turns off the TV angrily. Lionel and a lawyer going to the jail to see Jeff is the next scene. They show him two magazines that told his life story. Story. Jeff becomes happy seeing that and says, oh, they even printed my story on magazines. Can I have it? I want to read it when I get bored sitting in the cell. But the lawyer refused to give him the magazines. Then Lionel says to Jeff about why he brought the lawyer. Lionel says, you have to say that you are mad in the court. Jeff says, I'm not mad. No, I won't say that. The lawyer says, but you have to say, we don't have death sentence in our country, but you will be in prison for life long till your death. If you don't want to be in jail till your death, you have to say that you are mad in the court. Jeff asks, but why? What's the use? Lionel says, son, if the court realizes you are mad, then they will put you in a mental hospital. You won't have any problem there. You can live more happily and safely. Lionel was still doing all this because he didn't want his son to suffer, but Jeff was reluctant to do it. So they decides to tell Jeff the story of another serial killer named Ed Gein. The police goes to Ed Gein's home, according to a complaint received by them that he has committed a murder. When they searches his home, they finds a lot of bodies in his house, and then they arrests Ed Gein. When the police asked him why he committed all those murders, Ed Gein replied that, Sir, I'm mad. So the court decided to send him to a mental hospital instead to a jail. He wasn't punished with life imprisonment. The lawyer says, Jeff, you can do that too. Just say that you are mad. But Jeff replies, Sir, I want to be punished for what I did. Lionel and the lawyer become angry and leave. Jeff sitting in the court is the next scene. The judge says, It is proven that Jeff is guilty. Hence this court promises justice for Jeff's victims and their families. Hearing that, the victim's families becomes happy and they all applauds. Judge disperses the court, saying that, the judgment is postponed to Monday. For the first time, Joyce was also there, who came to court for Jeff's case. Joyce leaves the court once the court disperses. Lionel goes behind her and says, Joyce, this is all your fault. You are solely responsible for Jeff's current situation. Joyce surprised asks, what? Am I really the one who is responsible for all this? Lionel says angrily, yes, you. You should have been a good mother. You should have cared him at least a bit. Sherry was trying to console him as it was a court surrounding. Joyce too got angry and says, Lionel, you are the reason why our boy ended up as a criminal. You taught him how to cut dead bodies. Now he is suffering for all you did to him. You are the major reason for his situation. Then Joyce leaves. Everybody in the court heard them arguing. The next day, Joyce goes to the families of Jeff's victims. She apologizes to all of them. She says, because of my son, you are in immense pain and grief. I'm apologizing for your huge loss. Can you please forgive him? The families become surprised and ask back, should we really forgive him? Will you forgive him if you were in our situation? Joyce didn't have an answer for that. Joyce even started bargaining for Jeff. She offers money to them so that they'll support Jeff. Joyce did all that because she might have felt a guilty feeling that Jeff is her son too her responsibility to. It became Monday. Everybody reached the court. The judge asks the victim's families, you can say whatever you want to say. They all sadly talk about their sons, and each and every family says, sir, Jeff must be killed. People like these aren't meant to even live. He murdered our dear sons. He should suffer the biggest punishment. Finally judge asks Jeff, do you have anything to say? Jeff says whatever he wanted to say. 
I have killed a lot of them brutally, I should be punished, I understood my great mistakes, I can now see the pain in others' eyes, I'm apologizing to everyone for the mistakes I've done. The judge orders him to punish him with 914 years of imprisonment, according to his crime's intensities. Glenda was also present there for the judgment, outside the court, she shares her happiness with her daughter. I'm really happy now, he got punished finally, said Glenda. Meanwhile, Lionel and Sherry goes near Jeff, and Lionel hugs Jeff. Lionel then sadly says, son, I blamed on many, for your this situation, but I was the one who really transformed you like this, I am the one who should be punished, son, please forgive me, I couldn't be a good father to you, Lionel cries and hugs Jeff, after some time, the police came and took Jeff away, meanwhile, Joyce was writing a letter to Jeff, and at the same time, she let the gasoline open to commit suicide. Lionel was typing something. Sherry approaches him and says, your second son, David had called you. Joyce committed suicide. Lionel asks, oh god, is she okay now? Then he continues typing. Sherry wondered, why is he not really responding appropriately? But she didn't ask that out loud. We all know why Lionel wasn't that surprised. Because Joyce have tried to commit suicide a lot of times before. The suspended police officers come back to their office and they are welcomed by the whole office. Jackson with the old lawyer, traveling in a car is the next scene. Jackson was calling talking to someone on his phone and he hanged up after some time. The lawyer asks Jackson, what's the matter? Jackson says, the two suspended police officers got back to their office. Surprised lawyer says, their suspension got over this quickly. Why aren't they listening to us? Jackson says, the blacks are nothing in front of those whites. The suspension was just a show off only to make us believe that blacks and whites are treated equally. The whites can do whatever they want. All we can do is fight. Yeah, let's fight the next time. This last scene shows, no matter what, blacks will not be treated as equal as whites. This episode ends here. We will be back with the next episode soon.